14 days of thought-provoking topics. Listen online at 1037thebeat.com. The People Station is 103.7 The Beat. Top 10 books African Americans should read and have in your home. I'm seeing a common thing. Culture, culture means uh, a lot. When you talk to a lot of folks who we don't we don't have on radio today, yeah. culture means a lot. Go, going to our next book, I think this would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, number seven. Black Folks Guide to Making Big Money in America by George Sabara. Okay. This book represents a balanced view of the possibilities set before blacks in America and the requirements to obtain such realities. It gives a none, it gives a no nonsense approach to forming dreams and making reasonable estimates for the cost to make them real. Not that long book, something you can read in a short time and gives you results on gives you suggestions on how to make these different benchmarks in your life. Book number seven of top 10 books African Americans should read and have in your home. We will have this on our website at the end of the day. Thanks to Franklin Fadal from Mesquite Tribune newspaper for um, giving us um, these books. Got three more to go. Three. Three more to go on this subject. Going to the phone line, Troy Johnson is on the phone line for African American Literature Book Club out in New York. How you doing today, brother? I'm doing quite well. Thanks for having me on your program this afternoon. Man, it's an honor. You have the largest book club in America, they say. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually been a labor of love. Um, I started the the, uh, the it's actually now a website dedicated to promoting books by and about African Americans, really people of of African descent and the continent, no matter where they where they reside. Um, it's it literally is the the largest website of its kind, and and certainly one of the oldest. Um, wow being launched about 13 years ago. Wow. How many books are you, do you have under review there, and, and how many authors do you feature there? Oh, man, hundreds. I think the last time I counted, it was well over 600 authors that have been profiled. Wow. Um, you know, it includes, um, you know, biographies, all of the, you know, the books that they, they have in print. Uh, many of the books are reviewed. Um, if you look at a typical profile, you'll see video, you'll have interviews, you'll have uh, descriptions of their books, places where you can click and buy the books. Uh, it's, it's a wealth of information about authors of interest to our people. Well, here's, here's the since you know, we know that you've been doing this for a while, and you got a, you have a a big following, and you got a big fan base on Facebook, and you're very busy in New York. You meet you you know the who's who of, of who's who in, in literature. What is your top five books that African Americans should read and have in the home? Okay, now all, all of these books are, are old. Okay, uh, they're th actually the newest book is probably from 1998 which I'll, I'll recommend, uh, I'll start off with that one. I prepared a list of 10, but I'll, I'll pick out five from my list. Um, the first book uh, from 1998 is called uh, 360, A Revolution of Black Poets. And uh, this, this book uh, was, was edited by uh, Kalamu Yasalam, uh, along with uh, Kwame Alexander, and includes uh, the work of, uh, of, of a lot of poets, uh, people like, uh, E. Ethelbert Miller, uh, Jessica Kerr Moore, uh, many poets uh, that were popular near the beginning of, of what you know what's been what we describe as hip hop now. Mm -hmm. uh, so many of the people they they were uh, the, their words, uh, what they wrote about uh, was reflective of what was going on in, in the in the uh, late '90s, mid to late '90s. And I think that's an important read because it kind of gives you a, a sense of, of what was important back then. And we'll, we'll, what, we, what we'll see is that a lot of these issues have become even more critical. Hmm. Okay, 360, Revolution of Black Poets. A revolution of Black Poets. So you got to have something about, uh, was that, uh, that would be Langston Hughes or, or Ball, Langston Hughes? Uh, this is, would be Langston Hughes' grandchildren's generation. Ah, okay. Uh, and in fact, now that you mentioned Langston Hughes, I did have one of his books on my list. Uh, you, you can't go wrong reading anything by Langston Hughes, but I picked one that um, was a little unique. It's a, a book called Black Misery. And uh, Black Misery is, is, is simply a, a, a bunch of quotes. And, and this particular book uh, has, a, uh, a card, has illustrations along with it. Hmm. And one of the things that's interesting about it is that, one, it's, it's very accessible, um, as is much of Langston Hughes' writing. 
uh, but it, it's uh, simple yet deep at the same time. Uh, you know, one quote I could think of off the top of my head was, um, I read in, in the newspaper, um, my neighborhood was a ghetto, but I always thought of it as home. And, uh, you know, that, that type of um, uh, poetry, you know, resonated with me, even though it was written, you know, uh, in uh, my parents' generation. Hmm. Uh, wow, good. Um, what about, what's the next one you got for us? Um, another book I will pick would be Black Voices. Uh, this book was uh, published in 1968, and it includes um, essays, poetry, and prose from, you know, all the seminal figures writing at that time. I mean, you'll find people like uh, Dr. John Henry Clark, Paul Marshall, Ann Petrie, um, Sterling Brown, um, you know, it's, in fact, I have the book in front of me. Most of the, all of these books I just pulled off my, my shelf and I keep close to me. Hmm. But, you it, you know, it has um, just a, a wealth of, of authors and it um, would be an excellent book uh, to introduce people to, you know, some really important writers, uh, poet uh, Gwendolyn Brooks, uh, historian Lerone Bennett, uh, James Baldwin, uh, you know, the list goes on and on, Leroy Jones, uh, Amer- better known as Mary Baraka. Um, it, it's just an incredible book filled with um, a lot of, um, of important writing, huh. uh, writing that will help us better understand what's going on in our world. Black Voices, 1968. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Um, you know, when I was thinking about the books that I would, would like to, what I want, that I wanted to recommend, I, you know, I thought about uh, an author named Ben Oakry. He wrote a poem called Ten and a Half Intonations. And in that poem, he describes quite simply what type of books we should read. And he, he describes, he says, we should read books uh, that are outside of our race, our religion, our culture, and class, as hmm. an example. So when I think about books that I would like to read or, or the next book that I want to read, I, keep, I always keep that in mind. And, and saying that, the next book I would like to recommend would be, um, and it certainly certainly should be on everyone's uh, shelf, is uh, Dr. Walter Rodney's book, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Hmm. Um, I read that book uh, prior to going to Nigeria last year uh, on the recommendation of uh, uh, people, of some Nigerians uh, that I know. And uh, one of the things that that book did was help me understand uh, how Nigeria got into the position it's in now, not just Nigeria, but uh, much of the continent. And I think that it gives an American a, a very good perception of, it helps you reconcile what you see, perhaps or what you might expect or what you might be reading in, in, in someone else's um, description. Right, right. Wow, wow. You can keep going. I know I, uh, it's, this is moving pretty quickly, so we, 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 we got a, a little bit more here. You okay. got any, what was uh, some more? Sure. Um, one of um, my one of my favorite books was written by um, Gene Toomer. It's um, his book is called Cain. This book was written in 1923, or at least it was published in 1923, and it was actually the first book on our online book club's reading list uh, back in. I think we started that in '98. Uh, but it's a it's a, a thin volume. Uh, but it, it, it's beautifully written, it's lyrical, it's the type of book that you can read over and over again and, and get something else out of it. It's just, it's, it's just really a magnificent work of, of art. Um, and I would, you know, I, 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 I recommend that book um, to anyone that's looking for something really interesting to read. Some people suggest that Jane Tuma might have started the literary aspect of the Harlem Renaissance with the publication of that book. Uh, but it, again, it's uh, a great book. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the next one. I would go with um, uh, Dr. Carter G. Woodson's *The Miseducation of the Negro*. Yeah. Uh, that book, and I'm sure it's probably on everyone's list of must-haves for right. the African American home. Uh, but it's actually one of the best-selling books on AOBC.com. Uh, it's it's um, year in, year out. It's it's always in the top ten, and, and for good reason. I mean it. it it describes um, it describes things that are relevant today in terms of our thinking, and uh, you know there's a popular quote uh, from the book. You know when you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions. You don't right. have to tell him 
You don't have to tell him to stand here or go yonder. He will find this, in quotes, proper place and will stay in it. You do not need to send him to the back door. He will go without being told. And in fact, if there is no back door, he will cut one for a special benefit. His, ed his education makes it necessary. And when we look at the state of uh, education in this country, uh, it, it helps you understand why it's such a crisis. And it, it helps you understand and appreciate why um, it, 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 this is something that we, we really need to do something about the state of education in, in our country. Uh, because without a proper education, without a, a knowledge of, of, of who you are, proper knowledge of who you are, you, you're susceptible to fall for anything. Right. And that seems to be some of what we've seen a lot of lately. Right, right. Okay, go ahead. Keep, you're doing, doing good. I, I'm writing all this down, too. I mean, you have to send me an email on these, man. <laughs> yeah. in, in line with reading outside um, uh, your race, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I recommend and I actually have this book and his author profiled on the site, Howard Zinn. Um, he's written um, an extremely popular book called The People's History of the United States, uh, 1992 to present. Um, what makes this book important is, you know, I'll underline the word people's history. Uh, because the people's history or the history from the, the people, or I'll say the victims, of some of what's happened in the United States, going back to uh, Native Americans, um, working poor immigrants, uh, women, uh, and, and, Af and obviously uh, African Americans. Um, it, it, it relates uh, important uh, events in our history, but from the perspective of usually voiceless people. Um, and it's, 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 this book has been it's been updated over the years since it was originally published, and I don't quite remember when that was published, but um, I believe it started out in the 80s. Okay. Uh, but again, another important, important work. And, and if they go to your website, they, um, they go to aalbc.com, they can uh, find out about their book? Absolutely. Uh, they can just, the easiest thing to do is uh, click any of these titles or the author's names in the search box that's on the upper right hand side of every page and, and you'll come to actually of all of these books you'll find reviews and, and profiles of all of the authors of these books that I just described um, and one of the reasons why they're on this site is because again I do feel that they're very important right. uh, an, another author outside of our culture mm -hmm. our race but writing and writing stories that will appeal to certainly black folks, but people universally, um, is an author named Paulo Coelho who wrote a book uh, called The Alchemist. I've read a number of his books, but The Alchemist is far and away my favorite. Alchemist. Wow. What, now, what is that about? Well, this, it's, it's about, about um, following a passion, um, you know, figuring out what you want to do understanding how to pursue it it's a novel but um and it can be you know it it will almost reflect back to you uh what you put into the book it's 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 a fascinating read but it really talks about following following finding your bliss and and and, and following your goals and 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 realizing them hmm. and, and often what you might think of what you might think you want to do may not necessarily be that, and you have to be open to receive uh, what those um, what 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 those things might be. So um, yeah, huh. it's 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 really it's a really again another slim book can be read in a, a day, um, but it's it's really powerful. Good good. What's the what's the last one? It'd be number ten right here then. Yeah. Would it be really okay? Well, I, you know what? I have to end with uh, the Holy Bible. Um, I think that. You know, that book has been, you know, has had such an impact on black folks, not just in this country, but globally. Um, it, you know, book, it's, it's been a, has had a positive impact, and a lot of times it's, it's had a negative impact. Uh, but if you ignore um, how it's been used and, and look at some of the content in it, um, you know, one quote that I use often look at often, a lot is um, 
you know, First Corinthians, uh, the first 13 uh, verses, which talks about love. Mm-hmm. And if, you know, if people understood or looked at um, that description of love and adhered to it, I think that uh, the world would be a much better place. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I think that um, whether you're a Christian or not, um, that book and books like it should be uh, spiritual uh, books should be on everyone's uh, bookshelf. Well, Troy Johnson on the phone line from African American um, Literature Book Club, AALBC.com, got reviews. Now, now, do you review these books or do somebody do them for you? Uh, yeah, I've, I've, most of the reviews published on the site are reviewed by um, other writers. Okay. Um, I'll, I will occasionally review a book, um, but most of them, you know, my job with the website is uh, adding all of the content. If you look at the website, it's a massive site with thousands of static pages and even more dynamically genera- generated pages. Um, there's a blog up there. There's discussion boards. Um, there's, you know, everything is integrated with the, uh, the social media, uh, the reviews. People can comment on reviews. There, there's a whole lot of things going on in the website. And, uh, I, I, I see. I, I see the one book under review, Black Faces in White Places, 10 yeah. Game-Changing Strategies to Achieve Success and Find Greatness by Randall Pickett and Jeffrey Robinson, now reviewed by Cam Williams. Right. Cam, Cam is perhaps one of the most prolific writers um, out, of, out there, and uh, he's written literally hundreds of articles and interviews, and uh, he also reviews film. Um, yeah, he's a, a terrific um, uh, contributor to the website. Wow. And, okay. what, what are the reviews on, on Jay-Z's Decoded? You know, I haven't, we, yeah, actually Cam reviewed that book for the site. He, he gave it a favorable review. Um, it, I haven't heard anything negative about it, but actually I haven't seen the book myself. Okay. Uh, so I, I can't speak to that directly. Uh, but from what I can tell, you know, I've read the marketing copy. I've listened to the video that that you'll find on the website as well of Jay Z speaking about the book. Uh, but yeah, I, I personally I couldn't give you um, my own take on it. Uh, but the take of reviewers and, and from what I can glom from reading uh, other online um, assessments is that um, it, it's, it seems to be received fairly well. Now, Troy, how many books have you read in your life? You got a book club. You got the largest book club out there. How many books have you read? Yeah, I can I can say almost without reservation that most of most of my visitors have read more books than I have. <laughs> I probably if, if over the you know the the really the most interesting thing about this is that before I started the website, um, now over 13 years ago, I you know I read. Uh, if I needed to learn something, to do something, I read primarily nonfiction. Um, I rarely read a novel. Uh, but as, as soon as I started, you know, the website, um, I discovered that there was a wealth of, of literature out there, a literature that I, I that would have escaped my scrutiny. Um, so I'm one of my best customers. Oh, okay. But I, I would average anywhere between, I, unless I'm on vacation. I'm, I'm, I'll probably read about a book a month, a novel a, a novel a month, and I have uh, several books open at any given uh, point in time. Right. Uh, tell, tell me, do nonfiction books help more than fiction books? If well, you're trying to get knowledge yourself, I mean, I mean, if you're trying to find yourself. I think that, uh, you know what, that's, that's, I've never been asked that question, but I think that the nonfiction books are, are probably a little better in, in that regard. Um, and then I book The Alchemist, for example. Um, it's, it's a novel. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it's not, it, you, if you, when you read it, it, it doesn't feel like you're being lectured to or told what to do or how to do it. Um, it's, it's a book of discovery, and it's one of those books that you can read over and over again. You know, Cain is, is, a, is a similar type of book. It's just, just a beauty in poverty, in other words, you know, there are descriptions of, of, of people who are under, imp- you know, severe poverty, but he brings out the beauty in that. Right. And so, you know, these writers have the ability to help you see things that you wouldn't normally see if it was just written as a factual, in a factual fashion. Right. So, uh, yeah, you know, 
I never thought of it that way, but I, I, I would say that the, non, the fiction uh, is probably better for that. Wow. Anything else you want to say in closing before we go? Well, you know, again, I want to thank you for the opportunity. I, I, um, I'm looking forward to going back to your website and checking out some of the other programs. All right. I know this was part of a, a much larger effort on, on talking about, you know, 14 day, days of thought-provoking topics. Yeah. So I'm really anxious to, you know, dig in and listen to some of that stuff. Well, Monday, you let, let uh, people know in, in your forum that we, we talk about who benefits from crime on Monday. And, okay. And that's on uh, day number 14, about 14 days. And uh, we're going we're gonna to roll out the, I, I see you're a corporate America guy, you know. Yeah, I, I, I've been off the so-called corporate plantation for almost three years now. But, but you work for, uh, tell, tell the audience who you work for. Oh, I've worked from, from everyone from uh, Goldman Sachs to General Electric to United Technologies to PricewaterhouseCoopers. I've, I've had a pretty uh, long corporate career, uh, almost 25 years. So. Why, 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 why did you say corporate um, a plantation? Well, you know, it's it's um, it's a running joke that I have with some of my buddies. Uh, <laughs> we um, all of us, uh, even though we we work um, work jobs, we always had sideline businesses. We always had something that we did that we truly enjoyed doing. Um, but the trick was figuring out a way to make money doing something you actually like to do, because you know, essentially, people need to work in order to satisfy some basic needs. So um, once each of us got to the point where we could actually support ourselves with our passions. We call that getting off the plantation. You know, there's a whole string of running jokes. You know, I could have saved more people if only they knew they were slaves. But the whole idea is that, um, you know, our goal was always to do what we love and make a living out of it. And as each of us peeled off, we would say, hey, I'm off the plantation, and, you know, see you later. But, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's um, kind of an inside joke. <laughs> okay. Place. Well, thanks, man. I got, I'll got post your link on Facebook. We're going to have one on our website, too, so people can go to the website, aalbc.com, African American Literature Book Club, the largest of its kind. How many members you got over there? Oh, man, it depends on how you count them. Okay. I mean, we, get, we get hundreds of thousands of visitors a, a month. Wow. Um, the newsletter um, has over 17,000 subscribers. Wow, um, that's huge. You know, it, it, yeah, I mean, if I, I, sh- I guess I should, as for, for advertisers' benefit, uh, sit down and aggregate all of these numbers and people that I can touch. Well, you got a database there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> it. And, and, and they're, quality, they're, they're quality people. I mean, some of the newsletter subscribers have been subscribing for a decade. Wow. Um, and we've been publishing continuously for, you know, over 10 years. And so still, Carter G. Woodson is the number one seller. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a strong book. In fact, it's on my desk because I plan to reread it. Right. Um, but, yeah, no, that, that's, uh, you know, and, it, and it spe- if you look at the, the nonfiction books, um, much of it talks to um, self-help. Um, you'll have authors like Jawanza Kanjufu, um, yes. you know, who who really speak to you know educating black boys, which you know, and Jawanza's been writing on this subject for since I've heard of him. Right. And um, is the subject matter is increasingly and increasingly important. Right. Um, well, time goes fast, Troy. All right. Let's keep in contact, man. Keep right, up the I good work and enjoy. Thanks for getting your books out there. All right. I appreciate it. Hey, God bless. Take care, brother. All right. All right. Bye-bye. There you go. Troy Johnson, Rob. Wealth of Knowledge. Yeah. Yep. AALBC.com is the website. African American Literature Book Club. Top 10 books African Americans should read and have in the home. 